everybody, Mike Wick Williams, Upstairs to the Right Music Channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping first. I do a live stream every Sunday night at 11 p.m. Central European time, and it's called Sunday at Mike's. Talk about a lot of cool stuff, a lot of interesting topics I give my insights on. So it'd be really great if you could take the time to tune in wherever that finds you in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening, wherever you are on this planet. It'd be great if you took the time to show up. All right, so uh, as you know, I made a deal uh, last month where I traded uh, my Marshall Blues Breaker pedal uh, for this 40th anniversary um, Telecaster from Squire. Um, I like this so much that I was willing to give up one of my coveted pedals uh, for it because I was in the market, A, for a Telecaster, and B, um, I started out on Squires. Uh, to get a Squire again is actually kind of nostalgic for me. So uh, with this 40th anniversary uh, model, I said there is a match made in heaven. So I made the deal and boy, I'm not sorry that I did because this has turned out to be really a fantastic Telecaster. It's replacing uh, my made in Japan uh, Telecaster that I had for so many years. And you know what? It feels it, it has the, the, the weight of, of that guitar. Everything matches that made in Japan guitar. So that's the first conclusion that I came to is that these are very similar in build to the made in Japan guitars uh, in the late 80s and the early 90s. Uh, so many that I've owned and played. And so it's very comfortable for me in that regard, but there were a few things uh, that it did need work on. Frankly speaking, uh, it, it is probably one of the best guitars that I've had out of the box in my life. Now, of course, I got this down to Dirkwick Music um, in Utrecht uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, Barry always has great guitars. I've said that before. Um, and this is just another one of them. Uh, for some reason, he really gets perfect ones. <laughs> uh, the fretwork on this was excellent. Really, uh, when I took it to Fern, my luthier, he said that it, this is actually a very nice one. Coming from Fern and being a Dutch guy, that's actually high praise. <laughs> but uh, he didn't have to do anything to the frets. Gave him a little bit of a polish. That was it. Uh, but I did make some changes uh, to this guitar uh, that I would like to go through. Uh, the very first thing that I did was from top to bottom is I got rid of the string tree that it came with because for some reason it was not a correct string tree. It, um, it needed uh, to be a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, so I had that done. Uh, the next thing that I had Fern do was to remove the nut and to cut me a bone nut specifically uh, for this guitar. You know, I'm a big believer of uh, having bone nuts made for your keeper guitars, the ones you're going to hold on to. Uh, at least I do. Right here, this uh, 59 Les Paul also has a bone nut uh, replacement. And uh, there's just something about uh, the, 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 the tuning quality that you get once you, you get a nut cut specifically for your guitar also, uh, whether it's bone or, or new bone or plastic, whatever, you know, no, not plastic, <laughs> anything but that. But you know, to have something specifically cut uh, for your guitar done by a luthier really makes uh, the tuning stability uh, in the intonation uh, really just tops. I mean, you really can't beat that. The next thing that I did to this guitar that I had Fern do was uh, Mickey Norman um, was uh, kind enough, Mickey was kind enough to send me uh, a, a Telecaster neck pickup from Bare Knuckles and uh, also a uh, complete set of brass saddles. So pretty sweet. Uh, thank you, Mickey. I really appreciate that. Uh, to replace the neck pickup that came with this guitar, uh, you know, one of the only flaws that I found with this guitar was the neck pickup. It was very dull, very muddy, and had no clarity at all. And the sound samples that you've been hearing that I've been playing in this video, uh, just uh, actually on clean uh, using my Laney amp here, uh, just that you could hear the clarity of this pickup, I am shocked actually how it's a, it's a, 
literal night and day difference uh, with this uh, bare knuckle pickups uh, replacing uh, that standard Squire pickup that came in. Really a great thing that Mickey did by uh, sending me uh, this bare knuckle uh, neck pickup and then getting down here to these brass saddles. Uh, you know, there are a lot of schools of thoughts on the saddles on a Telecaster. By the way, if anybody ever tells you that brass saddles are the vintage correct, uh, way of uh, handling uh, your uh, <laughs> your intonation uh, situation on your Telecaster, uh, that is incorrect. Actually, they use both brass and steel. Leo was working things out back in the day uh, as Leo Fender, so uh, they use both. Uh, but what is true, if you have a bright guitar, I found this guitar when I strummed it to be a very bright uh, guitar. And uh, one thing that brass saddles will do for you is they will uh, take a little bit of that brightness out, mellow your tone. And uh, that's exactly what happened when I took those steel or whatever they were made out of uh, saddles that this came with and put in this brass one. The tone of this guitar now is really buttery. The clean tones are really excellent. I really like the way that this sounds. Now, the last thing that uh, I had done was I had the switch replaced. Uh, I put in uh, Oak Grinsby USA a switch. Is, it's really the switch you put in uh, to Tally's a replacement part switch. Uh, it's reliable, it's a great quality, and uh, I'm a whole lot happier with uh, this switch being the way it is now. Uh, with this replacement part. Uh, the other thing that Fern said uh, when he was inside of here is that there was too much wiring uh, going on underneath here so he cut the wires to be a little bit shorter. Uh, he said the pots and caps were just fine and um, so yeah uh, really happy uh, with this guitar. Now I have to be honest with you this is a fine Telecaster. Uh, for recording, for gigging, I, I would take this on the road with me, no problems. Certainly uh, use it in the recording studio. So the changes that I made to this uh, didn't come out to more than a total cost of about a hundred bucks. So a little bit of an investment uh, more I put in into an uh, excellent, well already excellent guitar just to you know put that finishing touch on it. And now uh, this is just a fantastic instrument. Uh, it's done. There's no need to do well you know eventually like I said I'll experiment with the uh, bridge pickup. But it's basically, uh, it's, it's good to go. And uh, I couldn't be happier. Uh, it is an excellent replacement for uh, the Telecaster that I had for so many years. It, it just feels natural in my hands. And as like I said, the weight matches as well. It's a very light guitar, this one. So uh, there it is. Uh, not a lot of money, I think. Um, I think, of course, with Mickey uh, giving me the neck pickup and the brass saddles, of course, that kept the cost down. Uh, you, if you did something and purchased those, you're looking at 50 for a decent uh, neck pickup and maybe another uh, $17, I think I saw for the brass saddles. So still for in around uh, under $200, under $180, uh, if you want to make those changes like I did to this, including the cost of, uh, of uh, labor. Uh, you wouldn't be doing wrong because it just tightened this guitar up and uh, now uh, with uh, the bone nut, the brass saddles, the new bridge pickup, uh, the new uh, switch, uh, this thing is a killer guitar. So I'm really happy that I made those changes and I'm glad that I have this. Um, yeah, I really love and I love this guitar. Honestly, I, I was able to start uh, uh, working with it immediately, writing with it. Uh, which is always a good sign. Uh, I like to write from Telecasters when I'm, I'm writing for some reason, not acoustic guitars, uh, really not the Les Paul because it's a little hefty, 
Um, I really like uh, sitting down when I'm doing my composition, doing it from a Telecaster, uh, with a Telecaster, and uh, boy do I have one now to do that. So if you're thinking about getting a 40th anniversary uh, Squire, uh, maybe what you heard today will give you a little bit more uh, information as to whether or not this is the guitar for you. Um, I didn't have to make those changes that I did. Out of the box, honestly, the way that this was, it was, it was good to go. I put those changes onto it to personalize to what I thought that I would like to hear it, uh, you know, eventually come out to, and I'm not sorry that I did because, again, just a solid instrument now. I would put this up against any Made in Mexico Fender, uh, no problem at all. Even maybe some of the uh, Fender USA models, I would say that this holds its weight against those. So in any case, uh, I hope that uh, gives you a little bit of information. hope that helped you out. If you're on the fence about getting one of these, uh, they are going to be gone. So if you're thinking about it, you might want to pull that trigger quickly because they're only producing this uh, into the end of this month, I think, is, the, is when the cutoff point for this is. So anyway, um, take a look into it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, if you did enjoy today's contents, please take the time to hit the like button. And also, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you join the community that we're building here? It's getting stronger and stronger every week, and you'll see a lot of cool stuff like this coming up. So hit that subscription button, and we will see you on the next show. Bye-bye.